Now, gonioscopy in cases of angle closure glaucoma. We all know that, we are accustomed to know that acute attack of glaucoma is painful, and we do gonioscopy to see it's totally occluded all over or still functioning. We all know that. But many of us do not know that sometimes we have a gradual closure of the angle, and all the time there is no symptoms. So at the end, you have a patient with never any history of acute attack of glaucoma, and he got high pressure, and you're going to diagnose him as open angle glaucoma, unless you put a gonioscope and find it occluded. So we have a chronic angle closure or a creeping asymptomatic closure of the angle. So keep this in mind. Not always symptoms. Sometimes angle closure glaucoma is asymptomatic. The point is you need to see the trabecular meshwork. Is it visible or not? If it's not visible, then you are dealing with an occludable or occluded angle. You need to depend on your judgment, on comments, or keep in mind examining the upper half and the lower half of the angle. So, the pigmented trabecular meshwork. If it's visible, it's an open angle. And you have to be sure it is visible in the 360 degrees. So this is an open angle. If it's not visible in the upper or in the lower half, this is an occludable angle. This narrow angle, it can be occludable, just an approximation between the iris and the cornea, or can be closed. And this closed can be closed by adhesions between the iris and the cornea, this is peripheral anterior cyanechia, or a position between the iris and the cornea. The difference between occludable and a position, in the occludable you get the iris very close to the cornea, but you get some space in between and the aqueous can pass. But a position, you get the iris in contact with the trabecular meshwork. Cyanechia, it's an actual peripheral anterior cyanechia. So, occludable angle, if you ask the patient to rotate his eye toward the mirror you are using for examination, and you start to see the trabecular meshwork, so it's an occludable angle. There is some space between the iris and the trabecular measure, and only can be seen when the patient moves his eye. So it's an occludable. To differentiate between a position and synechial, in both you don't see the angle whenever the patient moves his eye, but you need to do the indentation to differentiate between these two situations. So keep in mind, you need to examine the upper and the lower halves. Now, the amount of illumination used, you need to use minimal light, because if you need use a maximum illumination, there will be a meiosis, and the angle will be artificially open. So you, you want to examine the patient in a more physiological situation, so the illumination is dim, and the light slit, if you get it short and sh shorter, you have less illumination. So this case, we start by asking the patient to look straight ahead. This is the primary position, and we use the Pusner lens without any indentation. And as you can see, in the upper half and in the lower half, the trabecular mesh work is visible. So this is the case of an open angle. Now, another case. Here in the upper half, 
trabecular meshwork is not visible, while in the lower half the trabecular meshwork is visible. So you get some problem here. So the diagnosis is a narrow angle. Part is seen, part is not seen. Then the further step is we need to do indentation gonioscopy. As you can see here with the indentation gonioscopy, the iris is pushed back, trabecular meshwork is not seen, so this is an actual synechia. In the lower part, when we do the indentation, you notice one more thing here. This is the most peripheral part of the iris. It was pushed behind. The iris is movable. In this drawing, the iris is pushed forward. With the indentation, the iris was pushed backward. This is an important sign in cases of plateau iris. If there is a plateau iris, the ciliary processes is behind, and you cannot do that. But if it's just a, a, a pupillary block glaucoma, then you can push the iris back. If your diagnosis that there is an occludable angle, then you need to change the lens, use the one mirror, Goldman, and ask the patient to rotate his eye. In the, this situation, while the patient is looking straight ahead, your sight can, cannot reach to the trabecular meshwork. But if you ask the patient to look toward the mirror, then your sight, your line of vision, can reach to the trabecular meshwork. Then you know it's an occludable angle. So again, to start, if there is no angle, no trabecular meshwork seen, and you ask the patient to look toward the mirror of examination, and now you can see the trabecular meshwork, then it's an occludable angle. This is much easier to be done with the one mirror Goldman rather than with the Pusner lens, because the one mirror Goldman keeps the eye steady, then you can see better image, while the Pusner, the eye of the patient is free to move and the visibility will be difficult. So this is the case when you ask the patient to look toward the mirror. So keep in mind that when you do indentation gonioscopy is to check the most peripheral part of the iris. Is it movable or not? To know if you are dealing with pupillary block or iris, plateau iris.